So I thought to myself, you know, I do a lot of DVD update videos. I do videos about movies and stuff like that, but I never really talk about books, do I? No, I really don't talk a lot, a lot about books because I'm really not a big reader. I am a slow reader. I am very slow at reading, honestly. Like, yeah, you, you don't even know. Uh, depending on the material, it can take me up to and sometimes longer than 10 minutes for one page. Yeah, 10 minutes to read one page. What's funny about that is I can write faster than I read. A lot faster and a lot better than I read. So, you know, I'm not much of a reader because it just takes me inordinately large amounts of time to do it. A 200 to 400 page book can take me two to four weeks to finish. And that is like if I am intently reading it like at least four to six hours a day. Um, it's, it's not easy. Okay. It's not easy for me to read a fucking book. Uh, it's easier for me to pop in a movie and check it out for two hours. And, you know, it's... It, Honestly, I find it easier to read a movie. I just get it better than I do sometimes books. And it's just, books take so long to pay off. Movies can pay off just as well sometimes in a much shorter amount of time. So why would I read a book, you know? But I'm an English major, so I have to read books anyways. But the point I'm trying to get across here is that I'm not a big, you know, reader. I watch movies more than I read. This is obvious by now, I'm sure, to most of you. But I do have a few books that are near and dear to me, and I love them. And I honestly, these are like, I would like to see these made into movies or TV shows or what have you. Maybe even video games. So anyways... In this video, I'm going to tell you about my favorite books. Uh, a lot of the books that I consider my favorites are books that I have read before, but don't really read as much now. I, I can easily read them over and over again, but I just haven't gotten around to it in a while, you know? I keep them mostly because I had an amazing time reading them, and I, I want the option, if it's there, to read it again. Even though chances are I may never read it again, you know? Because that's how I am with books. I'm like, I love this book. And I want to read it again, but I can never find the time or bring myself to invest the time to read it again. Anyways, suffice it to say, these books books have been sitting on my shelf for quite a while and they mean more to me you know personally than they do uh, as a form of you know continual entertainment you know what I mean most of these were introduced to me by my uh, tutor when I was younger um, in, a, in my teens I think her name was either Christian or Christina, I can't even freaking remember because I'm a horrible, horrible student. But I loved her. She's just a great, great teacher. And I miss talking to her, you know? And I, I know that sounds like it's romantic or something, but I swear to God, I don't mean it in a romantic way, okay? There was no weird, creepy stuff going on. It was just... She was a really good teacher, and I was passionate, passionate about telling you how good of a teacher she was because she literally took me from being like a D and C student to A. I mean, without her, I would not be where I am right now. I swear to God. So there, that's another reason these are some of my favorite books and are in my collection, as it were. Although I don't get to read them very much, I can look at the freaking cover and be like, I know what that story is. I remember that story, and I loved that story. So without further ado, the first book I'm going to show you 
is X-Files Ruins, written by Kevin J. Anderson, a novel based on the hit Fox television series by the best-selling author of Ground Zero. <laughs> yeah, um, Chris Carter apparently worked with Kevin Anderson on these, from what I understand at least, on a few of these, and this is one of them. And the reason I like this so much, if you've ever been an X-Files fan or if you've ever watched the X-Files for more than a few episodes, you know, if you know even a little bit of the lore involved with X-Files, then you're just going to adore this. This is amazing, honestly. Uh, the story follows, I mean, the thing is, with the X-Files, it seems like they went a lot of different places in the United States. But they rarely ever went anywhere outside of the United States or outside of Canada, maybe, too. But in that general area. They stayed in that general area. They never really went out of there. So when in this book, they go down to freaking South America. <laughs> That's the first thing that caught my eye. I'm like, wow, they're in the jungle in South America. <laughs> Actually, I think it's Central America. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's actually Central America. I'm sorry, I take that back. And they go down there investigating the disappearance of an archaeologist who uh, supposedly found some interesting ruins that may have had something to do with aliens or something, you know? Uh, aliens are not, not far off when it comes to the X-Files, right? Never, never far off. But um, suffice it to say, Scully and Mulder go down there and go through this. They go through the jungle to get to the uh, the ruins to look for this person. And through this whole thing, at the end of it all, um, I'm not even going to tell you the end of it. I can't tell you the end of it because that would ruin it. All I can say is that if you have watched the show before and you know about Mulder's history in particular, you need to read this book because it will shed a new light and an interesting light on that that you hadn't thought of before, maybe. And it'll make you think twice about some of the things in the story of the X-Files. So... Definitely an amazing book, honestly. I like this a lot better than I liked some of the episodes of The X-Files. That's what I'm saying to you right now. This is awesome. I wish they did more stuff like this. But anyways. Alright, next up I'm going to show you a book introduced to me by um, my teacher in my Jewish American literature class which means it's going to be Jewish American literature, doesn't it? But it's amazing Jewish American literature. I mean, before I got into the class, I didn't even know what it was going to be. It was just like a topical class that they had explained what the topic was going to be. When I got there and they said it's going to be Jewish American literature, I was like, oh, no, is this going to be boring or is it going to be cool? Turns out it was actually pretty awesome because it introduced me to this book, which is... I'm already deciding this is one of my favorite freaking books, okay? This is an amazing book. And this is the one that's being has been optioned and is going to be made into a movie at some point. The Coen brothers have said that they were going to do this movie, but they keep doing other movies, so I'm like, well, when are you going to do it? When are you going to freaking do it? And I'm also wondering, how can you put everything amazing about this book into a two-hour movie. If anybody can do it, it's the Cohen brothers. But it would be it's going to be really hard, and it's going to be something that a lot of people would not expect from the Cohen brothers, and maybe I'll be able to show you or explain why when I show you the book. Michael Chabon. No, it's that's the name of the author. I hate when the author does that. I'm sorry, Chabon, but... And I'm, I'm probably completely tearing the crap out of your name there. I apologize for that, too. But it's like, I hate when the author's name is bigger than the freaking title of the book. It's like, 
Are you that self-important? I'm a writer, too. I'm not that freaking self-important. My name would be, like, in tiny print on the corner here if I ever wrote a book. I don't care about that. I care about, you know, somebody reading my material. I'm not concerned that they know my name. What is with the self-importance crap? I don't get it. But anyways, this is the Yiddish Policeman's Union. This is an alternate universe for the Jews, basically. <laughs> so it's like, imagine that World War II didn't end when it did. Imagine that more Jews were killed than were actually killed. Or I can't even remember if that's exactly what happened. But basically imagine that things didn't happen the way they did, that Israel wasn't given back, or taken, I should say, and, you know, the whole thing with Israel in the 1940s. Imagine that didn't happen. And so the Jews that were left were left to fend for themselves and they had to find somewhere that they could live and so you know that's kind of been the sad history of the Jews is that they've had to find somewhere where they can live even if they feel out of place and the sad history about what's so sad about that history is that when you think about it now the fact that they had to move back into Israel is kind of screwed up because it's another case. It's another case of them having to move somewhere that they're not familiar with anymore, you know, and trying to re-familiarize themselves with it. And I think this book kind of speaks to that kind of stuff too, but, uh, and it's hard not to in, in, when you're writing about the Jews. I really like this book because it's basically like an alternate universe where... The Jews that were left over about, I believe it was like 1.5 or 2 million or something like that, where uh, they took refuge in um, Alaska, a town called Sitka, Alaska. And, you know, they were about to be forced out of Sitka, as usually happens with the Jews. I'm sorry. It's it's horrible. Not the book. The history of the Jews is horrible. I'm sorry. It's a sad story. But, you know, they know how to get humor out of it, so good on you. You know, you, you take it the right way, I think. So, basically, this is like, I think it's from the 80s, that the, the, it takes place in the 80s. But uh, you have to imagine also that it's like an alternate universe. What ha what would have happened if this hadn't happened in the history of the Jews, you know? So here they are all sitting around in Alaska about to be shoved out. A and all this crazy shit starts to happen. Basically, there is a policeman... Uh, a Jewish policeman, the Yiddish Policeman's Union, uh, working in this small union, and everything's going to shit, and he's about to be kicked out of his job, and he's freaking depressed because he lost his wife, and now all of a sudden his wife is back and in charge of him. Like, she came back with a better job than he did, a job as a superior to him well, makes it kind of awkward you know basically somebody dies and they don't find out until later that this person was actually of some importance why am I telling you that because it's important to the story but it doesn't give away the entire story so don't worry about it it's just it's what you need to know to know like the synopsis of it you know so uh, once they find that out, they start to unravel a little bit of a, you know, thing about it. They start to realize, wait a minute, this might not have been um, a suicide. Maybe it was a murder. And it's, it's kind of that murder mystery type of thing going on. And the way that it's written is in the style of noir, basically. 
This is like a hard-boiled detective novel gone insane. Because it goes from being your basic detective novel to being a conspiracy about the end of the fucking world. And the cows. The fucking cows. Yeah, I said it. I said cows. So, you know right now, with all the crazy shit I just said, in the span of like 15 seconds there, you're like, there is some insane shit going on in here. And it's really awesome. You really have to check it out for yourself. I mean, wait for the movie if you have to, but I'm telling you, it's an easy read. And it's awesome. Last but not least, yes, I really don't have any other books that I would consider favorites that I can just talk about, like, forever, because I love them so much. But um, this is actually a series of books, which I've talked about with friends before, but I've never, and I've shown some of them, but I, I don't feel like I've properly described them before, so I figure do a video about it, explain it in detail. And uh, the series of books, I don't have all three of them. I'm waiting to get the third one because I can't find a really good deal on it. And I'm not willing to get the paperback because I have the other two in hardback right here. And I want the collection in the first edition hardbacks. And that is the Mist series written by Rand. Rand and Robin Miller. Yes. Um, there are three books. The Book of Atris. The Book of Tiana. And the Book of Denis. The Book of Denis is... Um, I always wanted to call it the Book of Denai. Because uh, uh, Denai is... like Denis is the name of the city. In, in, is the name of a city in, in the story. And the reason I always wanted to call it Denai is because of what happens in the city and everything and just the characters and all the shit going on in this story. Um, it's extremely complicated. Social implications out the ass in this. It's better... Uh, it's a better fantasy science fiction than most of the stuff probably that you've ever read before. I would put this up there with Lord of the Rings, and honestly, I like it better. I'm sorry, it's just fucking better, okay? There's more to it. I swear to God, there's more to this series than there is to Lord of the Rings. I don't know what it is, but there's just more to it. Or maybe it's just that I like what they go into in this one more than I like what they go into in the Lord of the Rings. This is an amazing series of books, and honestly, even though this one came first and is rightfully the first book in the series, it's actually a sequel. The first book in a series is the sequel, and the second book in the series is the prequel. And I'll tell you what. Most people say if it was done in that order, you should read it in that order. But I'm telling you right now, read the prequel first. And it's not because, oh, you get to see what happens before you see what happens in this. It's because this is heady stuff. This has to deal with, you know, there's like daddy issues and all that, and there's you know, stuff about where the, these people came from that is not explained barely at all in this book. And it's just a crazy adventure that is brilliant. It's awesome. But it's not good unless... I mean, you wouldn't be able to tell what the hell was going on. It would just feel like, you know, a bunch of stuff being thrown at you and you have no reference for it, basically, is what I'm saying. So I'm saying it's great, but if you have no reference for it, your chances are most people are going to be disappointed and they're not going to know what's going on and it's going to be frustrating. So I'm telling you, read the first book first. It sets out the tone of all three books perfectly. It sets out 
the uh, ideas that they're trying to express in all these. It explains the attitude of the people who lived in this city and everything. It, it explains, you know, the racial tension and all that that's going on, which shows you that although there are daddy issues going on in here, it's not all about the daddy issues. It's not because of, you know, my dad didn't treat me well, so I'm not going to treat you well. There is some of that in there, but it also has to do from... Uh, uh, it also has to do with where he came from, his, you know, culture. And that doesn't pass over to his kid because his kid isn't from that culture and didn't grow up in that culture. And the reason he didn't grow up in that culture is explained in this book. So I am telling you, read the second book first. A lot of people say don't do that, and I'm telling you, they're wrong in this case. Read the Book of Tiana, before you read the Book of Atreus, if you read those two in succession, you will be shocked. What happens is, there is a society of people who live underground and have never seen the sun. They've never been um, above ground, basically. So they don't even know that humans exist. So this is a race of people that have existed underground, and you wouldn't think that what well, maybe that you wouldn't think maybe you would think maybe that isn't possible, is what I'm trying to say. You would think maybe that isn't possible, but it is, and that image in the middle is part of the reason. That image is like one character, one very simple character in the the Ni language, and it is extremely extremely intricate every last part of it is important not just the middle part no every last part of this is important every intricacy about it says something about the one character that it represents and to my knowledge there are just thousands of characters in their language and the writers of their language are so good this is where it gets into the fantasy aspect they're so fucking amazing that when they write it well enough they actually have the power to transform books into pathways to another world so what happens is that they uh, write the book and then um, if you're given permission, you're allowed to go into the other world. And they open up the book, they place their hand, and they are immediately, kind of like in the Star Trek, if you will, they are immediately uh, sent into that world. And through that power, they've been able to write books that allow them to create worlds, basically, for their necessities. So they have entire worlds devoted to... Uh, farming of food and uh, creation of all that kind of stuff but um, with great power is required great responsibility and as with the human race not all are very responsible so what ends up happening is that you've got a few bad eggs who ruin it for the rest and um, they were, these people, these people are a very strict and very, you know, responsible race. Otherwise, they wouldn't have survived to this point. They have machinery that is so intricate that it's just amazing. And the way they describe it in this book is just, oh, it's breathtaking. Even the descriptions are just breathtaking. Um... And they're trying to use that machinery to get get up to the uh, surface until eventually they kind of have to stop, if I remember correctly. Well, no, they don't stop. They make it to the surface, but they don't do anything after that. They don't actually, you know, go up on the surface. They say, we made it to the surface. That's all we want to do. I was like, um, what? <laughs> but it kind of becomes apparent that 
maybe that was the right choice. Maybe they shouldn't have even, uh, maybe they shouldn't have even created a pathway to the surface. Maybe they even shouldn't have even tried to get to the surface. And the reasoning for that, I'm, the reason for that, is because eventually, a girl, a human girl, discovers a cave. And in this cave, she discovers that there's a pathway down. And it keeps going down and down and down into the bowels of the earth. And it looks like there's a civilization here. She's like, what's going on here? Until finally she runs into one of the people of Dene. Really, the entire series is an, an, an intricate and beautiful statement about racism, in a way. It, it's more than that, but there's just this amazing view of racism and how, you know, the human race is just, and, and life as a whole is like, in a sad way, just bred to become fucking racist bastards. You just can't accept anyone else or anything else. It, it asks you... If we did find an alien race, would we be accepting of them? And it posits, I, I think, it posits that no, we wouldn't. In fact, we would fucking destroy their civilization. But, um, you know, it can go either way. You can say that's what it's saying, or you can say it's saying something else. It's that intricate. So don't just think, oh, you said that, so that's what happens. No, it's there's way more to it. There's way more to this book than I could ever just tell you in a video like this. And that's why I'm telling you as much as I can to try and get you to freaking read this amazing series of books. Because, sadly, I don't think they're going to make this into a movie. I wish they would make this into a series of movies because it is just prime. It is ripe. For movies, this is this would just be a brilliant movie. Um, if you got the right person to do it, holy shit, this would be awesome. I mean, it would be epic. Oh. If you didn't know about Mist, the book series is based on the game series, the PC game series that uh, came out in the mid '90s. This came out along with it, and then there was it was a series of three books. And honestly, the third one is the most depressing. <laughs> uh, but, like I said, the only way you should read it out of succession is the Book of Tiana, the Book of Atris, and then the Book of Dene. And if you read it like that, holy shit, your mind will be fucking blown. I'm not kidding. Your mind is just going to be blown away. It is beautiful. And when I say it's beautiful, I mean... It is just so intricately described. Everything is meticulously, scientifically described in this book. And it's so scientific because these people from the society of the Dene people are a very scientifically minded people, or else they wouldn't have survived this long. You know, they're very intelligent people. And that's what they're trying to get across. The writers of this novel are trying to get across with the languages that they're using. And they describe everything just so amazingly. Uh, if you're a scientist or a geologist and you like fantasy novels, fucking A. This is amazing. I mean, they talk about so many different kinds of rocks and minerals and all that. And the second you read it, you'll be like, yeah, I can relate to that. I know exactly what they're talking about because I am a scientist or I am a geologist. And, you know, well, it's a, dealing with a society of people who have lived underground for God knows how long, for thousands of years. So the thing about these people is apparently they live for, they, their lives are much longer than ours. They're like three to four hundred years long of a life which is just absolutely amazing to me but yeah uh, suffice it to say that when Tiana tries to 
you know, introduce her human ideals into the society, it's met with a lot of backlash. And the backlash, I'm not even going to give it away. But suffice it to say, this is just... You're gonna, by the end of the book, especially this one, you might actually be crying by the end of the book because it's, because it's just so awesome. You'll love this. You just I can't see anyone who wouldn't love this. And the only thing you would un, the only thing you might not like about it is that it is so intricate, and that makes it very hard to read at first, especially this. And since I'm telling you to start with this, I'm giving you the difficult task because it starts out with a lot and I mean a lot of scientific mumbo jumbo description but it's important to start out with this it really picks up I swear to God it starts out slow but it picks up and becomes one of the most amazing things you'll ever read I've told you basically all I can without giving anything away and it's just a beautiful beautiful story a lot of people when they hear it's based on the mist series they even if they played the game they're like what that game was boring it was based entirely on the visuals now you get to see what's behind it this shows you what's behind it and you can't tell me that you look at this tome of a book all right Look at the design of this book and how it's designed to look like a fucking old classic tome. You can't tell me you you see that and you're thinking, I don't care. It does not matter to me. Because if you're seeing that, if you're seeing this and you're saying that, then you're full of shit and you need to shut up. Um, another thing I'm going to show you right here is... Look at the uh, look at the paper that they're using here. There's, they use a kind of a design of like this green border around all the pages. It's just a beautiful first edition. So it's not like you have to run out and get the first editions like I did. It's like I would say do that after you read the whole thing. I'd say get the paperbacks first. Because they also look nice, and they also have this style. They're just paperback and not hardback, basically. And they don't have the nice uh, colorization of the pages, basically. But they have everything else that you need. And it's so cheap to get them right now. I mean, I bet you can find these books and get them all for under 12 bucks. But like I said, you want to read this one first. And I say that because there is a collection of all three books in one giant book, one giant tome. And of course, it starts out with this one. And so if you got that one, uh, my suggestion is to start in the middle <laughs> and read this one and go back and start from the beginning and then go to the end, which is kind of weird. But you'll you won't regret it it's amazing and honestly because of that i say don't get the collection get the older books but i also want the uh authors to you know get the proper recognition get what they deserve get some moolah from this you know and i believe that collection is the newest uh version of the book out there and so they might actually still be making some money off of that collection. So if you do want to support them, go ahead and get the collection. But I'm telling you, you got to check this out. It's just an amazing series of books. You think from the idea that I'm describing, probably some of you are thinking, it's so far-fetched. They create worlds with books? Come on, that's so cliche or that's so stupid. Have I not explained to you how intricate, how intricately, meticulously everything is chosen, every little image is chosen in this book? It might sound silly, but when you read it, you will fucking believe it to be reality because of how well it's written. 
And that's why I want, that's why I'm singing the praises so much of this. Is because no, when I tell people my favorite authors are Rand and Robin Miller. Rand Miller. I'm like, who the hell is that? Because nobody knows who this guy is because this is like all he's been able to do and all he, or all he's done, at least that I know of. If he's done more, then I need to know about that and find it right now. I want more people to know about Rand Miller. I want more people to check him out. I want you to see what I have seen and know that there are authors out there who have written books that are just absolutely beautiful and amazing will make you think will make you cry will make you want to be a better fucking person and yet so few people have recognized them for that and they haven't gotten any recognition for the achievements that they really have made so I'm saying this is one of those books this is one of those things you need to check it out it's absolutely amazing absolutely gorgeous and I still have yet to get the third book but when I do I plan on just going through the whole thing over again all at once so yeah those are my favorite books and I hope that if you are a book lover or even if you aren't and you just read them from time to time that you'll check some of these out specifically the missed books I really want people to check that out so anyways thanks for watching I'm sorry this video turned out to be so long I'll catch you later peace